guys, this is Afina and you are watching A King's Love Condos. So this video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be real casual, just a quick chit chat. Um, so recently, um, a couple weeks ago, I went to, was it a couple weeks ago? Well, last week, <laughs> um, I went to this dope conference called Legacy Conference in Chicago. Me and my bestie. Um, and it was absolutely amazing. And to be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of conferences sometimes or Christian conferences sometimes. And the reason for that is sometimes I feel like it tends to be engulfed in a person or a personality and it centers around a person um, or a speaker or hype, you know? And I think for me, I think I'm at a point where I just want the word you know what I'm saying? Like, I just want Jesus. I'm not here for like all the extraness. I just want to be able to be better equipped, um, to be a disciple, to be a disciple maker. Um, and so somebody posted this about this legacy conference, never heard of it, never been to it. And so I just like researched the heart of it. Um, and what the mission was went on their website and I'm like, yo, so I text my best friend and I'm like, yo, we have to go to this conference. So we made a way well, the Lord made a way. Um, but we made it and it was just absolutely amazing. Um, and so um, what I loved about this conference was um, it was solely based on the word from like every speaker, every person that got up there, like it was literally about the gospel and about Jesus. I don't feel like anybody was trying to, to flex, you know, anybody was trying to put themselves up on a pedestal. And there were, you know, a lot of people who, you know, are popular in the Christian circle or, you know, whatever poets and all of that stuff. Um, and Christian hip hop artists, but I really feel like, you know, the people that I saw performing um, at the hip hop concert the night before were the same people in the altar getting prayer or praying for others. Um, and so I just thought that was dope to see. And again, like the word and, you know, just how devoted and how gospel centered it was just made my heart so happy. And I just absolutely loved it. Um, there were 75 workshops. Yes, 75. And you had to choose four. Um, and so, you know, they just encourage you to pray, you know, obviously 75 workshops, like how are we supposed to narrow that down? But, you know, they encourage you to pray and to choose workshops based off of being led by God and, you know, where you are in your walk and what would most benefit you spiritually, not based off who was teaching the workshop, um, or the name of the person attached to the workshop. So, um, yeah, it was it was absolutely amazing. Um, and the theme of this year's conference was devoted to doctrine and just the importance of protecting yourself against false teaching, rightly dividing the word of God, um, Jesus being the center and the climax of the word of God. Um, and for me, it just reiterated the importance of what I do, even with blogging and doing YouTube. Um, I think about the scripture that talks about, you know, not many of us should become teachers because we would, we are going to be judged more harshly. I think sometimes we don't realize or recognize the weight, um, when you are teaching someone the word of God, like you're feeding them. And so you always want to make sure we always want to make sure what we're feeding people is solid food, not our personal opinions, not our personal experiences, not what we think the word of God says, cause that is totally irrelevant but what the word of God actually means. Um, and so I get this question sometimes, um, not all the time, but sometimes about starting a blog, starting a Christian blog, starting a YouTube page, all of that great stuff. Um, and my response is always number one, prayer. Um, making sure that your heart is in the right place. And number two, not just doing these things to be cute. <laughs> you know, not just wanting to build your own empire, but then using Jesus as a tagline. And all of us are susceptible to that temptation. Um, but just making sure that, like I said, what you're feeding people is the right thing. And to be honest, I sometimes I can look back at things that I posted years ago um, that at the time I thought I was preaching. Okay, like you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> but now looking back and as I've grown, I'm kind of like, um, yeah, 
yeah, I don't know if that was right. I, I think about what the Bible talks about, uh, a zeal without knowledge. And, you know, we get excited. Like when I think about those old videos that I kind of now don't, may not necessarily agree with, it, I wasn't trying to be in error. You know, I wasn't trying to lead people to my own opinion. It's, it's It was a zeal without knowledge. So you're zealous. You love God. You want everybody to know about Jesus. You want to tell your testimony, shout it from the mountaintops, which you should, and, and talk about the word of God. But that zeal doesn't have knowledge attached to it. You know, that zeal may not have the word of God attached to it. And so one thing that I've learned is to, and, and this was with me even following people and following ministers. like you can't listen to everybody <laughs> you know what I'm saying like I've learned that number one don't just regurgitate information you know don't just there's so many Christian phrases that's a whole nother video but there's so many phrases or Christian phrases that we may use that's not even biblical but we swear it is because we've heard it so many times repeated and so I've learned if it's not in the Bible it's not biblical I've learned to not just regurgitate information of what I heard somebody else say but to really get into the Word of God myself and not even just to be able to argue with someone or to be able to just say I know the word and I'm so smart because you know the Bible says knowledge puffs up but it's love that builds up the church and so loving the word of God and loving people just to be able to to feed them the right thing um and so I just encourage you with that if you want to start a blog if you want to start a YouTube page praise God if that's the direction that God is leading you to praise God I believe that we live in a time of social media of blogging of of social media where you can upload a status or something on Instagram and literally reach thousands and millions of people. I think that is incredible. Um, but also in that, in starting a blog, in using your voice, just making sure that you're pointing people to his name and not yours, um, and just making sure that um, his word is first, not worrying so much about quantity but quality. Um, so I just want to leave you guys with that. I know this video was kind of like all over the place, but whatever. <laughs> Feel free to check out uh, my blog. I, I'm starting something new every week. Uh, well, it's not new anymore, but it's called Sermon of the Week. And so every week I post a sermon um, that I believe is just really edifying. And um, this week's sermon is on marriage. It's called God's Glory in Marriage. And it's a quick six minute sermon jam by Vadi Bachman, uh, John Piper, and Paul Washer. And it's just about God's glory in marriage, um, what he intended for it to be, how he's you, how he uses marriage to um, teach us unconditional love. Um, and there's this one quote that stood out to me that I think Paul Washer said, but he said, if God gave you a spouse that met all of your conditions, how would you ever learn to love unconditionally? How would you ever learn to love like Christ? Um, so I definitely suggest you guys check that out. I'll post a link down below. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know and hit a sister up. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.